Welcome gamers to Airships Conquer the Skies. My name is Daz Tactic and uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a fun little session this one actually I think. I'm going to be doing this over a few different videos. Uh, we're going to be looking at version 1.1 of Airships and this is one of the most important updates that I've, I can think of for any game in recent times. I'm trying to think of an actual update to a game that has had so much impact to the way that you actually play it. This is an incredible free update. So if you've got the game, if you've got the base game, Load it back in if you haven't been playing it for a little while and give it a run because this changes the game in just incredible ways. There's so many things have been added into this particular update. I mean, there have been other games, I guess, that, that you know do have sort of like seminal updates. But this is certainly the one for airships. This is going to define the game, I think. And the, and the game is already very, very positively re reviewed on Steam. And so it's uh, people love this game. And I'm one of them. I love this game. <laughs> now I love it even more. So uh, anyway, welcome to the channel. Um, uh, if you, I, sh I should actually sort of, I'm trying to sort of now sponsor my own videos a little bit and sort of plug what I've got um, available or, you know, what I've sort of got there. I've, I do have a, a link to merchandise in the description. I've got a link to a coffee.com uh, store, coffee.com uh, slash dance tactic. You'll see that in the description there as well. Uh, that there, you'll sort of find some of the illustrations that I've done. I've got for sale over there, some for free. I've got some, I'm going to be putting some of the mods that I do over there as well. Uh, again, they'll be free, but you know, like it's, if you do want to sort of uh, support the channel, it's a good little way to do it. Um, you know, you can sort of either do it regularly or just as a one-off. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff there in the links anyway. I won't go on for too much longer. And of course, a big special thank you to my Patreon supporters. It really makes, makes such a difference to have that support coming in behind uh, with the YouTube algorithm it's just being so problematic uh, in recent years. So anyway, let's get into it. This is, we're going to be playing Conquest mode. Now, the, the, the changes that have been made to the game are pretty much all Conquest related. Conquest is this strategic map layer that allows you then to sort of play on like a, on like a world map and then actually have the, the tactical combat. So Airships, if you haven't ever played this before, Airships is a, a tactical combat sort of game uh, where you've got like different sorts of craft that are going to be, uh, that you design and build, and then they fight against each other, against ground forces. It's very, very cool the way it does work. It's like a steampunk uh, aspect to it as well. Like it's, it's certainly got that sort of, that feel to it. It's, um, as I say, very, very cool game. Conquest, let's go into it, go to a new game. Um, I'll go through this, the way to set these things up in just a second. This here is really, I guess, the overview because you can turn things on or off with the game. It's it's very customizable, and so the big big change, I guess, the the uh, the peg that the developers have been putting their pinning their hat on for this change has been diplomacy that you can sort of see in through here. So empires can be at peace, make treaties, or enter alliances. Now we'll see that in this in this episode. I will actually go into diplomacy as soon as we get into the actual game itself. Diplomacy is very very cool in the game, but it's, for me, it's not the biggest thing. <laughs> that has had it's a it's a very important aspect of the game, but it's something that's even better. Uh, anyway, diplomacy is uh, is I guess the big change that's come. Reputation is another mechanic that's been added to the game. And so you can actually gain or lose reputation, which sort of gives you like a, either a bad boy aspect in the game or a, you know, it's, certain things will sort of happen. Like the higher your reputation, the more your population will like you, the more money you will then get from them, etc., etc. And that ties in very closely with diplomacy as well. Now, both of these things lead to either an alliance victory where you sort of win with a, a di diplomatic alliances or a coronation victory where you win by reputation. So there's different ways of actually winning the game. But the big one for me, the big change is the supply system. And you'll see this when we get in there. It's a limitation to the movement of your fleets. And it used not there used not be any limitation at all to movement, but there is now with the supply system. And so what that one does, it means that you have to wait at different locations. You've got to be careful that you actually have enough supply when you get to a location in case you have to go somewhere else. And so it sort of makes you work more cautiously. And the game never had that. It was always, it was like a bit of a free-for-all. And it was, it was actually frustrating to play because there was just stuff going on all the time everywhere. And now it's actually, you know, each, like the AI or yourself, they can't just send fleets all over the place. They really have to, you have to sort of wait for them to, uh, to supply up and then move them into very specific locations. It's, it's really, really cool. Um, there is an optional auto-resolve. I don't know if that was added now or was there before. I don't like using this. I find this one actually 
tends to punish you more than it should. Um, direct control has also been added as well. So you can actually play multiplayer, cooperative multiplayer, and control different airships in the, in the same fight. So that's pretty cool as well, if you're into that. Now we're going to be playing on a medium map. Uh, we're going to be playing on, this is a mod, by the way, I've got. Uh, so you'll be able to get this one through Steam if you're interested. Uh, what I, Through the Steam Workshop. I forget what it's called. Daz something. All of my mods start with Daz. So it's Daz something to do with the uh, difficulty levels. I'm not sure what, what it's actually called. Anyway, it's um, I've sort of added extra... Difficulty settings and one I've put in one a bit hard and this one is sort of like in between medium and hard I found hard a little bit too hard and I found medium a little bit too easy So anyway, that's where we are with that one there. I'm gonna be playing on a mixed I'm gonna be playing with no uh, with default monsters uh, With research on normal and we're gonna start at tier one in the research Which at least means that we end up with rifling and a few of the other important things the suspendium chambers, etc and um, in talking of suspension chambers, I've gone with my coat of arms. I've gone with the mountain, which is going to then give me 30% lift from suspendium chambers. Now, what I can do here is I can go and edit the arms if I wanted to. Uh, I won't go through this in any de detail, but you essentially set up the background of your coat of arms uh, through these different sorts of uh, heraldic um, aspects, you know, whether you have charge or uh, fess. Um, doesn't really matter what we do through there. Anyway, that's sort of where we are. And, um, and then you actually have the actual symbol. And so whatever symbol you're going to then sort of have will then sort of show. So for example, if you and so if you if you know how you like to play the game, uh, then pick one that's going to suit you. And there's a lot in here, and there's a lot that have now been added in as well to to fit in with the new way of playing the game. Like you've got initial reputation. You've got double research from research treaties, like with the diplomacy back and through there, etc. I, I like the suspendium chambers, just gives me extra height. And sometimes in some battles, height can be quite important. The file I used to like as well, the extra research speed. But anyway, let's uh, leave that one where that is. So th that's a pretty cool way that one does work. Store bash, I'm just going to name this one something else. I'll call it down Australia. <laughs> I'm from Australia, so why not? Uh, we'll throw that one. I've never used that one before, actually. I've never thought of that one. So anyway, that's a new one that we can sort of throw in there. Uh, by the way, there's a, uh, this as well, Display Hints is definitely worth putting on and having that one. I think it's on, now on by default. But um, this one, even if you're an experienced player, you may like to see the reminders that come up from that one there. So that is um, that is a good one to sort of keep on. I think that's new as well. I forget exactly what is new in the game. Uh, I've been I've had this for six weeks, where I've sort of been t play testing it a little bit, and just sort of getting my getting my head around it, and 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 sort of really falling in love with it. I've got to say over that period of time, and it's a really cool game. Uh, start the game. Let's get into it. By the way, the game is on special at the time of recording, 40% off. So if you are interested, 40% off at the moment for um, for uh, Airships Conquer the Skies. And as I say, it rates incredibly highly on Steam. So people love this game. All right, so let's have a look and see what's actually now new on the map. We've got a few different things in through here. That's not good. We've got a moon disc in through there. I don't know what that does. Um, we've got So there's all sorts of now objects on the map itself where you have to sort of then interact this you've got the other factions as well but there's a lot going on now we happen to sort of start up in the top corner which is always a good place to start uh we've got a this pyramid or this cavern so the nitra caverns these stinking caverns contain the most pure nitra a prime ingredient for explosive so plus 15 percent damage from explosive that's good to know so we get that as a bonus because we control that others will have other things like they've got uh, worm head herds the um, the study the sturdy worm lizard is both a, a beast of burden and a source of nourishment, so they get plus fifty percent resupply speed for, from having that control of that one through here. Here's a social hub, a glittering world of social clubs, operas, and cabarets. All kinds of indiscretions and whispers can be found here. So spy actions are thirty percent more likely to succeed. These would all be good for us to control, actually. You can see that there's also different groups. Like there's heaps of heretics around the place. This is the reason we're struggling so much here is because of this moon disc. What is a moon disc? A giant red disc is descended from the moon. It floats above the landscape, exuding strange vapors. Cattle sicken and people go missing. I don't know how we get rid of that. That sounds like it's going to be very, very dangerous. Um, we can go and check them out if we wanted to. 
So anyway, that's the, the world map has certainly had a lot more love and attention as well. So just be aware of that. But the big thing, as I say, is the diplomacy. And you can see if we have to just sort of zoom all the way back. I might actually restart. I think that's going to really limit us, actually. I might just do another restart. All right, here we go. Here we go. We've got a, uh, a new start. Now, where are we? We're sort of on the back end of what looks to be a sort of like a weirdly shaped uh, Italian peninsula <laughs> with the Straits of Messina and there's uh, Sicily back over this way. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to sort of squint your eyes to see those sorts of things. Anyway, uh, let's get into it. Um, the map, we've got bandits back over through here. So the bandits, a small group of bandits are hiding out here. They have no serious weapons and should be easy to defeat by your fleet. So they're going to be an easy beat for us, and that's going to then cause, that is causing some issues for us. Let's just go through, if we have a look at the unrest, we can see there that the bandits are adding to the unrest, the empire size is adding to the unrest. The defensive buildings, we've got negative 15, and we've got the fleet at negative 15 as well. So we actually do have this one under control, but let's get rid of it anyway. We are losing income because of them. We'd have, um, so getting rid of them, we'll sort of sort that one out. Let's just have a quick look at our uh, our ship to start with. What have we actually got in here? If we refit, lots of bombs, a couple of rifles at the start. Good suspendium tanks. We've got a uh, propeller at the back. It's not bad. It's not very much... Um, Ammo stores. That will probably do the job, actually. What's the armor? Looks to be metal armor. Looks to steel wall. That's okay. All right, we'll just go back and leave that one alone in that case. And so I will send that one out. We'll go to research to start with. it. This is where the, the helper will sort of then come back in. We'll just get rid of that one. Pick a technology to research. Now, the one that I want to go for initially is reinforced hulls. There are other additions now into the actual, into this area, like there's new buildings. There's um, This has been fleshed out a lot, actually, which is very, very cool. We'll just leave that one where that is. All right. Um, now we've got, we're starting off with 1,155. Now if I go back into Australia, we'll see that we can actually build a port here because we're on the ocean. So I can build this one here, which will then give me a plus 18 income. I'm going to grab that one straight away. I can also go back to these other locations that are on the coast and build smaller ports in there. Uh, in fact, I could go back into both of those. These are both pretty good, good locations, actually. I might do that. Let's go and build one there. Actually, I will build the other one here in, in Australia. So we'll go and pick up those areas. Now, diplomacy. Let's talk about diplomacy. Now, diplomacy mainly uses reputation. Our reputation is quite poor here. I don't know why it's so low. Um, yeah, you need to have 80 reputation to control seven cities to crown yourself emperor if we go with the... Uh, with that coronation victory. So with the um, with the actual reputation and with diplomacy as such, we'll uh, there's two different ways to look at diplomacy. It can be a little bit overwhelming to look at all of this because this is all of the different factions and just a quick summary of what they actually are. Now, it, this can be useful to sort of see what's going on, but it's easier to sort of then pick and choose and think, well, this guy here is either going to be a very easy target for us. This is like no man's land down through this side. So if I go to Skerrill, and go to diplomacy. I get the same little summary through here, but I can then see what they what they've got. Now they're going to have peace everywhere, but this just makes it a little bit easier to understand. Now they're an evil conqueror, so they intend to conquer the world with no regard to reputation. That's actually their personality. That's going to be interesting. Okay, so they're obviously going to be a a, a, um, a problem to us. Um, now, if we go across, I can declare war if we wanted to. I can actually send an insult. The way this one works is that if they insult you back, you lose two reputation and gain five grievances towards them. If they don't, you lose two reputation. Uh, sorry, yeah, if, if um, they lose two reputation and gain five grievances. Now, we're not strong enough to do that one. This one tries to make things a little bit smoother between us. We can make an ultimatum where we can sort of add things in. One thing I like about this is it shows you the the numbers that you need to do different things. And so I'm just I'm not going to even worry about those with these guys. Make an offer in through here. You can see here we can we could try for a non-aggression pact, which is going to cost say two. Like if I throw this one in here, they're coming at minus two. All we have to do is just get this into the positives. Zero is not good enough. And so is there anything we could do to raise that by plus two? We can do dem um, demonstrate submission. And so demonstrate submission to the other empire by losing six reputation and gaining them three. Now that's gonna really hurt us badly. But if I did that one, they would then be in the positives and we could actually then go and do that. Um, 
give the two hundred. Yeah, I wouldn't do any of that anyway. Let's just let's just leave that alone. They're not really suitable for us to. We're going to be having to just destroy them fairly early, I think. Uh, now, un unsee back over through here. We'll go to the diplomacy here. These are craven, so these are very cowardly, easily frightened and bullied. Um, if we make an offer there, what are they? What are they got? Non-aggression pact. They're willing to sort of grab that one straight away. And we can receive another 100 from that by even doing that one there. Let's do that just so we've got a friend nearby. So we'll just get the non-aggression pact. You receive that one through there. Yep, that'll do. So we'll just make the offer. As long as that's positive, it's very, very simple, as you can sort of see. So we'll make that offer. Done. Non-aggression pact with them. Now, it's going to be difficult if we break the treaty... Uh, a promise not to attack each other. You can freely send ships to each other's cities. Breaking it costs eight reputation. And at the moment, we can't afford that. We need to build our reputation up. So that's that one. So you can see the mechanics are a little bit more a um, little bit more intricate. We can go into here as well, into this diplomacy. And um, let's have a look and see what we can do through here. This one here is actually the non-aggression pact. They don't want to do this one. If I hover over, we can see, okay, why don't they want to do it? In fact, if we just go back for a second... What are they? They're a contender. Uh, intends to dominate the world through conquest or alliance. So this one could be could be a, a potential ally, but could also be mo most likely a potential problem. So if we go back to uh, make offer and through here and and click on this one through this, or just hover over there, we can see that there that the proposed non-aggression pact, the baseline for that is negative five, which is what, sort of where we are. Now that we've got plus one relative strength, but minus one reputation. Our reputation is poor, which leaves it back at negative five. So, um, yeah, the alliance is negative 25 at this stage. They're not really interested in it. They're not really interested in that at all. Trade treaty of minus one, which I could get if I gave them 300. Let's not worry about it, though. Let's just cancel that. So um, the reputation is quite important. Uh, we'll have a look at this one. We don't have we don't have any connection. I've just gone to the ones that I'm connected to. That also does help as well. Like if we um, if we have a look, uh, where is it? I'm not sure where it will sort of show that. Take off. Some of these will actually have actually maybe if I go to this one back out here and sort of show diplomacy here. This will probably be even even less. Yeah, you can see non-aggression pack minus 29. And so you can see there the baseline is negative 15 because they've got, they're also a conqueror. Okay, this is going to be an interesting, interesting, interesting fight. So we've got, um, and they also then have a, um, uh, so they have an initial negative baseline because they're a conqueror. And also we've got another negative 15 because we're not adjacent to each other. So there's no, there's no real threat there. So they've got no real need to, um, to, do, to be like that one. I'm looking forward to this. This will be fun. All right, so we've now got reinforced hulls on the way. We do actually have our ship is sort of ready to go. Now, the supply system, let's talk about that. So this particular ship that we just had a look at before has got 19 supplies out of a total of a potential 39. And if we have a look across, we can see that a lot of these little areas, like if I go to one of my own ports, it's just a single arrow there. And this is showing me that, yes, I can actually get there in, in, and I can reach that no problem at all. Um, sufficient supply to, to move. Now, I generate supplies in my towns. That's why there's no other little arrow coming back. If we have a look at some of the others, for example, like even with the bandits, if I go and have a look at that, there's a green arrow coming back. So I've got sufficient supply to attack it and sufficient supply to return as well. So that's actually fairly cool. That, that, that means I can actually attack it and bounce back to Australia. Back in through here, for example, if I attack Phobo, I have uh, sufficient supply to attack but I've got insufficient supply to return, so I don't actually have enough. I need 24 to be able to do the return trip. And over through here, I don't even have enough supplies to actually even leave. So that's just not going to not going to work for me. So total supply, co supply cost there would be 24. You can see when I hover over it, what appears over through this side, it's giving us a little indicator as to where things sort of need to be. So I can just make it into there. I can make it easily back into there. You can see how it changes from white it's just it's just such a great little game this one it's it's a brilliant game let's go and attack the bandits so we'll just go with our ship and do that and unpause the game by the way if you um, if when you go in with one of these attacks you think oh I can't handle that one it's too strong for me in this case it's just a small little hideout through here which we can certainly deal with I'm going to move this thing down with all of its um, it's got heaps of bombs 
In fact, the bombs are going to be yeah, as high as I can get them, really. So maybe I'll start up here. And we'll just sort of sit and, and bombard the uh, bombard their location. This is very, very easy. If you go into a fight and you're not, not comfortable with it, just flee as early as you can. Uh, that way you can actually go and uh, at least you'll escape. So uh, you don't want to be losing ships if you can help it. So I'm just going to go T and then M. And I'm just going to go and move over the top of this one. And we'll just see what can be targeted. There's one there that can't. And this will absolutely destroy them. Like we don't have to tweak it. I mean, I can try to just get a little bit more. That's, there we go. All five are now there, and we've destroyed it. <laughs> That's done. By the way, so I'm going to apologise in advance for the uh, for the sound. Um, it does get very, very loud, and I've, I've tried knocking it back a little bit, but it just seems to always, if I zoom in, um, just block your ears. It's going to blow your ears, your eardrums out. So there we go. Nice, easy victory for us. So we get another 400. We've got plus 10 supplies, and we've got plus 3 reputation. So reputation has gone up by defeating these guys. Click on OK. Now, there may be others nearby as well. So we've, we've got a little bit of more supply back in through there. I'll just pause for a second. Just see if there's any other targets. We've got dragons, which we really wouldn't be able to contend with at this stage. Sorry, that just had a phone call. So anyway, let's have a look at these different uh, things that they're highlighting to us. So send a spy to a foreign city to gain information. Let's just do that at Skerrill. So we'll send a spy in. Now, the spies are a little bit more interesting as well. It does take a bit of time to for them to infiltrate. Uh, the game is currently paused here, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. <laughs> it's, I mean, it tells you everything. Uh, you can build a market in Kastovic. So um, again, it, you can go to, it's like, show me how. It will then explicitly go and, and click on things. I'll show you that just so you can see it. So tell me more will give you the information, but show me how will then point to the actual location. And so it says, uh, like, it's really, really detailed. Uh, like, there's so much good information in this game. Like, if you're a new player to the game, uh, it really does step you through. Then it says, go, okay, that's step one. In the panel below, go and click on the market. Now, I actually probably want the port more than the market, to be honest. So I think I'll actually build the port um, because the port gives me more money. So let's just do that one. I mean, it's still ticked it. That's okay, building a city upgrade. Um, and uh, yeah, tra uh, uh, you can make a trade treaty with Unsee. This is where it's useful, even if you're familiar with the game. So if we go across to Unsee, something has happened diplomatically where Unsee is actually positive with us. Now, where the hell is Unsee? Oh, that's this one here. All right, and we do want, yeah, okay, we can actually make a trade treaty with them. So this is this group. So diplomacy, we just make an offer. And so the trade treaty will be plus four. There we are. Now, is there anything else we can do? That one and also receive the uh, 100 bucks. So let's go and grab that. There's nothing else we can really go and do. Yeah, we've got the non-aggression pack there already. We'll just make the offer. And so this is good for us. This will now start to give us money. It'll give them money as well. So it's really quite cool. Uh, and our reputation has changed. So there we go. All right. Well, uh, let's unpause the game and uh, continue on a little bit. A little bit further. Now we've done this this uh, bandit, so let's just go back this one back to the uh, the capital and um, imposition rearmed. So this is the actual name of this particular ship. Now when this one gets up high enough, I will go and get uh, a ship that I've already designed previously, probably last year sometime. I think I designed it. I've got like a whole lot of ships in around the place. By the way, a few other little, other little things. So here, Spy is now established. So we can actually now have a look and see what they've got. Uh, let's just have a look and, and view the city. Now, that's not that powerful, to be honest. They've just got rifles in through there. And then they've got rockets in through this side, but they've got nothing from behind. So if I can get in behind, that is an easy city for us to, to combat. But they have a fleet of three ships, rocket ships there, Rocket ships there and rocket ships here. So rockets are everywhere. So that's high explosive. Uh, with our spies, we can format un unrest. We can build a spy network in through this side if we wanted to. Um, steal supplies from them or uh, ultimately steal research, which we can't do just yet. Okay, that's a bit of a problem, actually, having them having three ships like this. I think what we might do is if we just go to Australia and go to build ships... 
I've got like a, you can get them from the game itself, like the acid stench. It's, it's got different sorts of uh, of ships that are available just freely in the game if you if you want any of them. So most of these will be any of the HMSs you'll sort of see will be available. I don't know if any of these are anything that I've actually built. I don't think that they are. They may be. I'm not 100% sure. Some of them we can't quite afford. Some of them will actually have, like this one, flamethrower is not available. So we, we need to research that one before we could get the flamethrower. Um, there's so many different ways of playing this game. It's really amazingly good. But anyway, I've got a, a directory here that I've been putting my designs into. And the ship that I really want to get to help protect everything is the Enforcer. So I want to get one of these. And I think I, if I get one of those, I can just leave the other ship as a bombard ship. So I think that that will actually still sort of work in okay with the other ship. The other ship's a bit weak. I do have a few other bombardment ships in through that side as well. But I need 1300 for this one here. So I'll just cancel that. And we'll unpause and just wait for the, until we get 1300. Uh, by the way, this is the date sort of area. It's now spring. Um, so these are the different moons that are sort of showing around the planet. So it's sort of like a steampunk sort of other other area. This is the different areas that we actually, the eras that we have. Uh, the game is played in eras. So there's 11 months in each, or 12 months in, in the eras uh, coming through. Actually, I think it's more than 12 months. But these can be themed as well. So we'll sort of see them over the course of the game as well. Uh, the spies get different actions as they get to different levels. Again, the game has got so many little areas where if you just hover over it, it will then give you inf good information. These ports are still being built. Once they're built, we're going to get a big, big boost to income. Getting close now to being able to build this next ship. I'm concerned that these guys are going to declare war against us. We are the, the likely target for them. And we might be what we should do is have a quick look at our defences. Yeah, this is okay. It's not great. It's sort of okay. We'll just leave that alone for a second. And what about Australia itself? If we just go back to the defences in here, they've just got more of the same. So we could go and there's, there's our one, uh, one ship in through there. Um, just wait for this to come back up. Now you can buy su supply ships as well to just to help manage your supplies. It's a little bit confusing how to use these. I'll, I will actually make sure that I do get one of them once we get established. We don't need them initially. <clears throat> so these ports are all going to give us a big, big boost to money. Now we've got 1336. Let's just go back into Down Australia again, build a ship, and we can now get the Enforcer. So we'll grab one of those. And um, I'm just going to go to the HMS and just make this one a DAS prefix. So DAS Enforcer will be fine. We'll just click on OK. And this is a quite a powerful ship. Now, we don't have access to rockets, so that's, that's a, a tech that's a, more advanced than what we actually have. Now you'll start to see the little ports now starting to show up everywhere and through here. Uh, and we're getting now very, very good income. We're probably going to need a couple of these enforcers ultimately. We can, um, the market's 424. Yeah, I can grab a market in one of these. I'll, I'll grab it there. Actually, it's a bit far away. I'll throw, it, I'll throw the market in there. So these will just give me a lot more money over time. There we go. Skerrill has declared war. Now, where is it going? It's going up there. It's going to get there in one month and one day. Now, the, our enforcer is not ready. So we're going to lose this, unfortunately. But we may be able to do some damage. Let's just wait until we get the enforcer. Come on, enforcer. Get ready. We definitely can't send that ship in on its own. But if I can get the enforcer to go there, that will actually sort of then work. Sorry, I keep on getting uh, phone calls. <laughs> some pause so we're not going to be able to make this unfortunately we are going to suffer this this one here the enforcer is now ready i'm going to send the enforcer over straight away on its own even though there's three ships in here i think there's three here all three ships have gone there now hmm it would almost be worthwhile attacking that while we could no, let's go back in here. This is too much money to waste. So we'll, uh, I'm just going to 
deselect this ship so it's not actually part of the part of the fleet and we're going to now move this one across and so I'm going to go and click on that one I'm going to have as much supplies as possible so we want to actually put all the supplies onto this ship so we've got 39 supplies there because this one was full so as much as possible go and so it's now going to be moving off now we're going to have this fight going in first now we are going to lose this fight We've got four ships now. Wow. All right, so we're just going to... There's nothing we can do other than just uh, fight, so we'll just get started. Now, these will be inaccurate to start with. Just going to hope we can do some damage here with our rifles. These rockets are going to... for us okay um, so we've been disarmed we did the, we got defeated there and we'll just see how we go now the rockets are inaccurate I'm just gonna move back a little bit so we've got the cannons down low let's uh, let's hit this one here so we'll just go press M and we'll just come in behind it and the more we move the whenever we can we'll just keep on moving around a little bit stop one of those and we'll just keep on sort of attacking as much as we possibly can so there's gonna be a lot of uh, toing and froing here not too bad. Oops, that's pretty not the best place. That's okay. <laughs> now, ammunition, I can actually stop the ammunition if I wanted to. Um, I'll just wait for this to finish. So we're avoiding this one fairly well. Uh, we've got normal fire in through there. We've got uh, aimed fire only in through that side or hold fire. If we hold fire, I can actually drain their all their ammunition out before they can sort of really get to do anything. And then I can come in and get in very, very close. So I think I might do that. I might wait for this all to, um, to finish. So we'll actually hold fire. Just weather this for one aspect. It's actually working fairly well. So we've got a fair bit in through here. Uh, just keep on using the M key. Just keep on pressing M every so often. Good 
to know that we can just keep on bouncing like this. Leave them. Let them waste all of their ammunition. Oh, oh, that was a bit close. firing. I forget what the uh, ammo usage is of the rockets. They're sort of like 1800 style rockets, you know, where they just, it's very, they're not very accurate at all. They're not like um, modern day rockets at all, at all. This is like a steampunk sort of game, of course. But that's all they've got, is just these rockets. And that, oh no, they've still got some. all the smoke trails. Still going. Still hear them launching. We've got to run out soon, I would hope. Okay, that's all right. Now it's, it takes more than one hit to um, to damage us. They're okay. Still, two of them are firing. So one of them. Some of them must have extra. If we just pause it for one second and have a bit of a look to see what's actually going on with these guys. So if we have a look, uh, this one here has looks like it's actually wedged on top of this guy here, which is still floating around. The rockets, I think, are coming from this area here. They've only got one, so their ammo is going to be... Um, yeah, they've got two, so they... I don't know if they're they still firing. Actually, it looks like they're the only ones that are firing at this stage. This one here, I would have assumed, would have been able to turn around, but it looks like it doesn't have the ability to do it. There should be there should be one, the fourth one somewhere. There it is. This one's also facing the wrong way. It's taken some damage here, so I'm not sure why. So I think it's just the one ship at the moment that we're sort of dealing with. firing them off. I might just pause this while I'm just doing this avoidance for you don't need to be watching this. <laughs> this must be boring. All right, looks like we've now weathered that storm. We did get hit in the front, but I think we're actually okay. So let's now go and move in really in close behind them. So I don't think they can do much. This will then allow us to use our um, our weaponry. You can't tell what's going on here. Now I'm going to go and target one at a time. I'm just going to do normal. Uh, I'll do this one here. So we'll start to just we'll blow these up one by one. If we can blow these up, um, if we can get through this particular fight, then we're going to let's then open them up. That's good. Blow up one of the rockets. We've got heaps of ammo. Now we saw that it was trying to get a draw at one stage. One's a bit worried. I think one's still got rockets. Okay, no 
to leave that one alone. We're now going to change targets to this one here. I must have a suspending tank in there somewhere. <clears throat> Right of coal, actually. I'm going to target this one. Here we go, victory. So we got the victory out, out of all of these ones. So they've, um, we've taken back the location. We destroyed a couple of their ships and, uh, and we've actually been able to um, uh, get back the location, which is, as, as I say, the important thing in through here. So we'll just click on OK. Did very, very well there. We didn't actually take any real damage as well. So nice victory for us. Uh, that was really, really quite cool. Uh, so we'll need to now go and get our supplies back up. So they're actually wandering off with some of their ships. Now our ship is hardly taking any damage here actually. When we just hover over this one here, we've got the coal back up supp supplied again. We could go through now and start to, uh, we don't know what's actually here, but we could go and, and follow this one in. One week and six days. This is uh, two weeks and one day. So we'd, we'd, this one's gonna be limping back home, but without anything on board. It will get its what it had there back. I think we'll do that We'll actually go and meet this and we'll take Phobo from them uh, straight away. I'll come back and um, and talk about uh, Kastovic. We'll have to get this one repaired as well. Uh, we've got a bit of money, so we'll do that in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you then.